takes a lot of volunteers, a lot of volunteers to make this tournament work. 1,500 plus or more. And we followed one volunteer today as they got to do a pretty cool job around the course. Marge Zichik has been out here as a standard bearer for a few days now. It's a lot of fun. You know, you're always watching on television, all the guys playing. I play golf myself. But today, she's got a crowd. Uh, I've been doing this a, a number of years, and it's the first time I have, like, a real uh, top-level player and a well-known player, too, so there'll be a lot of people following today. Please welcome Phil Mickelson. She's following Webb Simpson and Phil Mickelson. Yes. I'm very excited, yeah. yeah. It's, I think this is a, I've been doing this a, a number of years and it's the first time I have like a real uh, top level player and a well known player. So, everybody loves Phil. It's really impressive when you get to see them up close and see how far they hit and how accurate they are with their shot. In Jersey City, Megan Dice, News 12, New Jersey. We want to go down to News 12, Connecticut's Alexa Farrell, who has more from the road in Fairfield. Alexa, how is it looking out there? I see the snow along the side of the roads, but how are driving conditions for you guys? I gotta take this off from my Yankees. He's getting back to his roots in the tri-state area. Caddy Kenny Harms is a Paramus native. Yeah. He, he could be the second <laughs> best putter next to me on the caddy. <laughs> this is my 28th year. 28th year. So yeah. how does someone get into caddying? For uh, a professional now, to be honest, it's so difficult. He was an assistant pro in Pennsylvania when he got his start by luck and chance. He got linked up with an LPGA golfer. And then I was supposed to go back to my assistant's job. Well, we finished second in San Diego. I called the head pro up and told him I wasn't going back, and that's and here we are 28 years later. So how does a caddy prepare before a tournament like the Northern Trust? We came out, we played nine holes, and then I did the other nine holes, and then I did the other nine holes. The next day, walked it and made sure that I got all the numbers. But, you know, the yardage book that Mark Long makes today has got everything in it that you need. You just go out and you check it. You make sure where you want to hit it, where you don't want to hit it. Around the greens, you'll put some, you know, information in there. So your player is well informed if because they rely on us to get that information so you know you spend four or five hours out there on the golf course checking it all out do you ever wonder what the conversation is like on the green between a pro and their caddy well conversation might be i mean if 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 it's self-explanatory that's you're hitting driver because it's a 490 yard par four you know he just takes out the driver but like on the first hole there's three different options you can lay up short of the bunker, you can hit it and make sure you get it over the bunker, and then you can make sure you get it over the water. So it could be a three hybrid off the tee, a three wood or a driver. So depending on the wind conditions, it could change what club we hit each day. Megan Dice, News 12, New Jersey. And don't we all wish we could have a caddy like that playing golf with us? He was just a really cool guy. We're very lucky we got to spend some time with him. So let's talk uh, transportation if you're coming out here today. You can park at the Newport Shopping Center Mall. That's in Jersey City. Just pay the day fee. They have a shuttle that's bringing you here to the main entrance, which is really cool. Also, Uber, this is brand new for the PGA. They are dropping you off at hole eight. So all you do is type in Liberty National Golf Course into your Uber, into your Lyft, and it drops you off right here and by the way if you have plans to head into the city today they have a ferry that's dedicated to coming back and forth right here to the course very easy to get here i hope you come out i just heard justin talking about the weather it is absolutely amazing out here we've been out here all week this is probably the best morning it's felt we're in jersey city megan dice news 12 new jersey megan thank you so much well, the gates are open here at Liberty National Golf Course, and they're ready for you and the kids. Kids 18 and under get in free with a ticketed adult, which is really cool, and they get lots of access. Take a look. Who's your favorite golfer? Brooks. Justin Thomas, and he gave me his glove. Who's your favorite golfer out here? Tiger. This tournament gives your little ones VIP kid-only access in several areas. And for parents here today, they're hoping golf teaches their kids life lessons. It's manners and etiquette, but also patience. You have to be really patient. It's not an instant gratification, and sometimes you don't get the shot you want. So you have to have some resilience, too. It's integrity, it's honesty. Golf is a sport where you have to call your own penalties and you have to really play your own ball the entire round. No one's doing it for you, so it's a lot on you, and I think it teaches you a lot to kind of 
um, you know, be very, you know, independent, but also make your own decisions and, and stick by them too. You know, I grew up playing golf with my dad and that was very special for me, right? And it's uh, uh, a way that my dad and I have stayed close uh, until he passed away a few years ago. And so for me, it's something that hopefully with her, uh, she'll, she'll want to keep playing and, and we'll be able to stay close together as well. Who do you have so far? I have Justin Rose, I have Woodland, and I don't know anybody else. <laughs> and then are you a big golfer? Yeah. Do you, are you a scratch golfer? I don't know. Well, some of these little ones aren't sure about their scoring skills, some already have their golf swagger down. I could hit the ball far. Are you a scratch golfer? Yeah. There's plenty of things for the kids to do around the course. They can get those autographs. They can get ice cream, food. They've got everything for you. We have all the details for you on how to get here on News12.com. We're in Jersey City, Mega Dice, News12, New Jersey. Thank you. On the phone right now is Governor Phil Murphy. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. My honor, Megan. All right. Well, Governor, what can you tell us about this restoration effort that's underway right now? So I'm in between, I'm doing this uh, little interview with you in between calls uh, with the two big uh, power companies uh, whose uh, territories were most impacted. All right, we have new information on a deadly crash on an interstate near Denver, Colorado. A major section of Interstate 70 still closed this morning. This is following this chain reaction accident. Police say it was caused by a tractor trailer driver that witnesses say may have been traveling more than 80 miles per hour. Now that big rig driver survived the crash currently in custody. Charges of vehicular manslaughter are pending this morning. There is so much wreckage, police aren't even able to tell how many people died. They're only saying multiple at this point. A bridge project connecting Monmouth and Ocean Counties was delayed for about two months over the winter when workers damaged part of that structure. Now the work has shut down one lane in each direction on the Route 35 bridge since last fall. We want to go out to News 12 New Jersey's Jim Murdoch. He's live for us this morning with an update. Jim, what's going on? All right, we're now joined by Senator Richard Blumenthal, and thanks so much, Senator, for joining us. I know it's a busy day for you on Capitol Hill as you and your colleagues working to try to end the government shutdown. You've been very active on social media over the past 24 hours. You posted on Facebook, quote, this is what failed leadership looks like. The president up early this morning tweeting and blaming Democrats, saying Democrats are holding our military hostage over their desire to have unchecked illegal immigration. Can't let that happen. I want to get your reaction. All right, any moment now, we're scheduled to hear from Attorney General William Barr in Washington, D.C. He's talking about the Mueller report, which will be released later this morning. Now, this investigation took a look at any possible collusion between President Trump's team and Russia and any possible obstruction of justice. Now, last month, Barr released a four-page summary that said Mueller did not establish a criminal conspiracy between the president's team and Russia. Many people enjoying the snow day yesterday. This is Andrew. He's a friend of mine from Virginia Tech. His daughter and their dog having some fun in Westfield yesterday. And if you could just yeah. leave this video up for a minute. This dog is adorable. Look at this. He's so Big happy too. to be out in the snow. Yeah, it looks like a golden retriever. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. How about your dog? Does your dog like the snow? Yeah. He's a whole story. <laughs> we do a whole show on him. Okay, okay. Yeah, How about does. we talk about the weather then? <laughs> I don't think we have enough time for okay. his proclivities. We want to go down to News 12 Canada against Alexa Farrell, who has more from the road in Fairfield. Alexa, how is it looking out there? I see the snow along the side of the roads, but how are driving conditions for you guys? It was asked many times by reporters why he wasn't there, and that I didn't really gather that the question was answered here. But again, March 22nd, uh, Robert Mueller concluding his investigation. Mm -hmm. He is a, he is employed by the Justice Department here. He said, I'm committed to transparency concerning this investigation. All right, we were just listening to Attorney General Barr talking about the Mueller report. Something that was interesting, Rick, and I don't know if you kind of gathered this as well, but we knew this already, that the report sought to answer whether the Trump campaign coordinated with the Russian government to interfere in the election. This was not established by the Mueller report. Mm -hmm. We already knew that. Something that was interesting, Mueller sought out whether certain actions of the president amounted to obstruction of justice. They said they looked at 10 episodes of the president 
and the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General determined the actions of the President did not amount to obstruction of justice. Mueller did not come to that decision. He said he couldn't come to the conclusion on the question of obstruction. But keep in mind, the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General were appointed by the President.